It was standing room only as people weighed in on the State Board of Education's gender identity proposal today. We're told it's the biggest turnout for a state board meeting in recent history. The board only set aside 60 minutes for the hearing, but with more than 100 people waiting to speak, it lasted hours. The issue is a proposal to allow students to choose their own gender identity and to use the bathrooms and locker rooms that correspond. Emotions have been running high since we first covered the plan earlier this year. Fox 47's Ann Perrette tells us what both sides are saying. At age two, Jennifer Robinson's son transitioned to become Gracie. As soon as she was able to start kind of telling us her preferences, what she wanted to be called and what she wanted to play with, how she wanted to dress, it's always been female. Gracie will start kindergarten in the fall and her parents are concerned the school won't know how to appropriately support their daughters or any other transgender's choice. Not being able to play in the proper sports team with their gender that they identify with or being forced to use facilities that they outwardly don't belong in. Robinson spoke to the Board of Education today about her fears with statistics showing many who identify as LGBTQ are at a greater risk for mental health issues, substance abuse and bullying. She says the guidelines will help her daughter fit in and decrease those negative experiences. To force her to use the single stall bathroom would set her apart and would put her in a position where she'd have to answer questions why she's always having to go to this other bathroom. But former teacher Bonnie Wood doesn't like the thought of allowing students to choose their identity at an early age. So you're in a classroom and you're, the child says, well, today I feel like so and so. So the teachers got to bow down to that? Who sets the standards and the perimeter? I think it's inconsistency and it's causing deception all the way around. Other opponents worry sexual predators will take advantage of the rules. As a person who myself has been sexually abused, I believe that that opens up a door uh, that we can't close. And Perrette, Fox 47 News. The Michigan Coalition to End Domestic and Sexual Violence disagrees with her. The associate director told the board studies from the CDC and World Health Organization show making a more inclusive space available actually decreases the risk for violence. But a few lawmakers are pushing back against the guidelines as well. They think the real concern is bullying, which the lawmaker said they addressed in anti-bullying legislation a few years ago. The public comment section on the board's website closes tomorrow night. We're expecting a decision as early as August and we'll let you know once one is made.